we have joining us Jonathan Wattrell and a director who is director of communication at the U.S. Mission to the United Nations. He is also a global affairs analyst and co-founder of civic tech company Arco. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure, Joshua. Now, five days after surviving an assassination attempt, Donald Trump will be addressing the Republican National Convention. He had earlier said that he is a changed man. He has also mentioned changing his speech, has promised to offer a softer and kinder message of unity. It's however hard to imagine, but what kind of performance will we be looking at uh, today from Trump? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely uh, we, we may see a more subdued uh former President Trump in his speech uh, this evening here in, in uh, Milwaukee, or we we very well could see the bombastic, very lively Trump that may come out. You know, this the speech, of course, will be uh, put into a teleprompter, uh, so there isn't going to be extra, you know, extremist speaking going on here. He will be reading, uh, but, you know, as had happened during his presidency, and of course, when he's on the campaign trail, he does deviate from the written text uh, that he has in his prompter. So there are expectations that this will be very different from uh, other speeches that we've heard from the president uh, and and something that would sort of point at almost a, a remake of, of, of the leader um, in which the past uh, four years of presidency would, would be looked upon as a, an era of great achievement in his estimation and, and look ahead at to, at to what he would hope to aspire uh, give, if given another four, four years. Right. Now, previously he talked about bringing unity. Now, from Donald Trump's perspective, what does unity mean and what does he seem to present to the Republicans? Well, you know, on the uh, campaign trail, we have not seen anything that speaks of unity. It's more about uh, taking shots at the, uh, the the President Biden's administration and trying to uh, make the make the case that uh, all the failures of that administration would be overtaken and uh, that the country would be put on a path. Uh, toward greater prosperity and more accountability among all the litany of other uh, complaints that the uh, Trump team uh, has about President uh, Biden and what we've been hearing echoed by one speaker uh, after another here at the convention in, in Wisconsin. Right. Now, while the Republicans are set to emerge from their convention more united than in recent memory, Democrats seem to be divided about whether Biden should continue to lead the ticket. What are your perspective? I mean, it is in many ways a perfect storm against the Democrats at this point. They have a president who who clearly is not the same uh, politician that we've seen over the last decades, definitely having uh, a lot of uh, difficulties in terms of articulating, in terms of energy, in terms of uh, a focus, uh, among other things, there are you know all sorts of claims about real severe cognitive issues uh, at play here. Uh, I'm not going to weigh in on that, but you know certainly uh, he is the president of the United States. Though we're not seeing him because he's isolated because he contracted COVID. Um, certainly a, a, a very different figure from the man I watched over the last decades as as an American citizen, uh, and you know his uh, prominence within the Senate. Uh, and then eventually um, vice president under President Obama, and then eventually clinching uh, the presidency uh, against Donald Trump. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at four years on from that period and uh, clearly a, a different figure uh, from, from the man who was running four years ago. Right. Well, it's still to see if Donald Trump will be addressing Biden in his speech, which is kind of like, of course, obvious if we could go ahead, but we'll be tracking that. Thank you so much for Jonathan for joining us on the show. Pleasure.